हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर पार्थ ठक्कर फ्रॉम एल जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन हीट ट्रांसफर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न एन टी यू फॉर काउंटर फ्लो हीट एक्सचेंजर टूडे इन अवर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस एन टी यू मैथड फॉर अ पैरल फ्लो हीट एक्सचेंजर वी हैव ऑल्सो लर्न अबाउट इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ द हीट एक्सचेंजर सो द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एल एम टी डी एंड एन टी यू एल एम टी डी इज लॉगेमिक मेन टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस मैथड सो वेन inlet and outlet conditions are already specified then lmtd method is sufficient to design any heat exchanger it is sufficient method to find out a particular heat exchanger area for a required heat transfer rate for a required inlet and outlet conditions outlet temperatures of the fluid but when the question is about to evaluate performance or effectiveness of heat exchanger then number of transfer unit method is more convenient so today we are going to cover number of transfer unit method for the counter flow heat exchanger we know that in a counter flow heat exchanger the direction of flow of the fluid are opposite to each other here we can see that from the flow arrangement that the hot fluid is flowing in this direction from left to right and the cold fluid is flowing in this direction from right to left from this flow diagram if we draw a temperature versus area diagram it will look like this the temperature of hot fluid is going to decrease as we are moving towards the inlet point to the outlet point the inlet temperature of hot fluid is th1 and the outlet temperature of hot fluid is th2 so here from the graph we can see that the temperature is continuously decreasing from th1 to th2 for the cold fluid is inlet point is here and the outlet point is here so tc1 to tc2 from the graph we can see that the temperature of cold fluid is continuously increasing as it gain heat from the hot fluid so the tc1 is less as compared to tc2 the temperature here at the inlet of hot fluid and outlet of cold fluid the temperature difference is written as theta1 which is th1 minus tc2 here at the outlet of hot fluid and inlet of cold fluid the temperature difference is th2 minus tc1 which is denoted by theta2 again as we have done in lmtd let's take one elementary area da for analysis and the heat transfer in this particular area let's say taken as a dq which we can write as dq is equal to u da u overall heat transfer coefficient da this area in the temperature difference at this point we don't know the Uh, exit amount of hot fluid. So let's take uh, exit temperature of hot fluid. So let's take as a TH with the temperature of cold fluid taken as a TC. So the temperature difference at this elementary strip DA would be TH minus TC. We can also write temperature difference TH minus TC as theta because here we write uh, temperature difference as theta one here theta two. So this temperature difference TH minus TC can be written as a theta. so dq is equal to u da theta we also know that the heat transfer rate the dq is equal to for a hot fluid and cold fluid for hot fluid is uh, mc delta t means means mh cph dth mass flow rate specific heat and temperature difference of hot fluid mc cpc and dtc for the cold fluid uh, you can see we have put minus sign in front of both hot fluid and cold fluid equation because as we are moving from this side to this side the temperature of both hot fluid and cold fluid are decreasing so here we have mentioned a minus sign in front of hot fluid and cold fluid the combined product of mass flow rate and specific heat is a heat capacity so here we have written ch in combination of mh and cph tc heat capacity of cold fluid instead of mc into cpc now from this equation we can write dth is equal to minus dq by ch and dtc is equal to minus dq by cc so dth minus dtc is equal to minus dq by ch minus again in bracket minus dq by cc because the value of dtc is equal to minus dq by cc and this minus is of from this equation so instead of dth minus dtc we can write d theta which is temperature difference here if we put dq in out of the bracket then in bracket minus 1 upon ch this minus and this minus will become plus 1 upon cc 
<coughs> so by rearranging dq 1 upon cc minus 1 upon ch now substituting value of dq as we have written is dq is equal to u d a theta so replacing dq with u d a theta we will get this equation d theta as it is instead of dq we have put u d a theta 1 upon cc minus 1 upon ch as it is now put this theta in upon of d theta so we will get d theta by d theta remaining terms are as it is now if we want to get equation from the whole for the whole theta extension then we have to integrate this equation so for the theta we have to integrate as a inlet and outlet conditions for the temperature which are 1 and 2 1 is assigned for the inlet temperature and 2 is assigned for the outlet temperature for the area if we are moving from 0 to whole area then the uh, limits are 0 and a now integrating this equation 1 upon something is a log of something upper limit is 2 and low, lower limit is 1 so log theta 2 minus log theta 1 we will get ln theta 2 by theta 1 here there is 1 so upper limit minus lower limit a minus 0 it is state the remaining terms are as it is now we know that for a counter flow heat exchanger theta 2 from the figure theta 2 is the th2 minus cc1 and theta 1 is the th1 minus cc2 so replacing theta 2 and theta 1 by the temperature value instead of theta 2 we can write th2 minus cc1 instead of theta 1 we can write th1 minus cc2 now putting this cc out of the bracket then ua by cc in bracket 1 minus cc by ch as we make this cc as a common term now we if we want to remove this log then this term will be e, e raise to ua upon cc 1 minus cc by ch so th2 minus cc1 upon th1 minus cc2 is equal to exponential of ua upon cc 1 minus cc by ch so this is a ex equation number 3 now we all know that the expression for the effectiveness can be written as this for the cold hot fluid this is the q this is q maximum q and q maximum q for the hot fluid q for the cold fluid this is nothing but mc delta t for the hot fluid and mc delta t for the cold fluid and this is the q maximum the maximum possible heat transfer rate for any heat exchanger which is c minimum which is the heat capacity minimum heat capacity from hot fluid or the cold fluid and this is the maximum possible temperature difference which is in inlet temperature of hot fluid and inlet temperature of cold fluid this is the maximum value of all four among all four temperatures this is the minimum value among the all four temperature so from this equation we can find out the value of th2 as a th1 minus epsilon c minimum th1 minus cc1 upon ch and from this is equal to epsilon we can find out the value of tc2 if we put tc2 ahead then we will get tc2 is equal to tc1 plus epsilon c minimum th1 minus tc1 divided by tc now putting this value of th2 and tc2 in our equation number 3 here putting value of th2 and tc2 in this equation here our equation number 3 so instead of th2 we have to write this and instead of tc2 we have to write this whole term so this is our th2 this is minus tc1 as it is th1 minus as it is and instead of tc2 we have written this term is equal to this term will remain as it is now from this equation we can see that this th1 minus tc1 and this th1 minus tc1 will common and in upon this th1 minus tc1 and this th1 minus tc1 will common so we will get this kind of equation this th1 minus tc1 and this th1 minus tc1 will be cancelled out so the remaining equation is look like this 1 minus epsilon c minimum upon ch 1 minus epsilon c minimum upon cc is equal to remaining term is as it is now if we have we have two conditions let's take cc heat capacity of cold fluid is less than ch so we know that whichever value is the smaller taken as a c minimum here we have considered that the heat capacity of cold fluid is less than heat capacity of hot fluid so cc can return as c minimum and ch can 
written as a C maximum. So in this equation, instead of CH, we can write down C maximum. Instead of CC, we can write down C minimum. Here also, instead of CC, we have written C minimum. And instead of CH, we have written C maximum. So now, this C minimum, C minimum will cancel out. So it's 1 minus epsilon. Now we know that the ratio of heat capacity, this is a heat capacity ratio C mean by C maximum, which can return as a R dimensionless parameter. UA upon C minimum is also a dimensionless parameter, which can return as N to number of transfer unit. And again, C minimum by C maximum is equal to R. So now let's make uh, this 1 minus epsilon. Let's put this 1 minus epsilon here. Multiplying this term into this bracket, so 1 into this, same as it is, minus epsilon into this whole term. So it is here. Now put aside a same term in either side of is equal to. So this epsilon r, if we put in this side of is equal, is equal to, then it will become plus. Put this expression, exponential term. In this side of is equal to then it will become a minus now from this equation epsilon is a common so epsilon in bracket r minus exponential of n to 1 minus r make epsilon a main term so epsilon is equal to put this term put this whole term in upon of this term so it will become epsilon is equal to 1 minus epsilon 1 minus exponential of n to 1 minus r upon r minus exponential of n to 1 minus r now if we multiply by minus 1 in both side upper side and lower side then the equation will be exponential of n to 1 minus r minus 1 upon exponential of n to 1 minus r minus r now we can write down this equation like this epsilon is equal to 1 minus exponential minus n to 1 minus r 1 minus r exponential of minus n to 1 minus r but the question is why how this term is directly rearranged as this term to understand this this is the final equation of effectiveness for counter flow heat exchanger but we still need to understand why we can directly write this term after this term so let's take one example let's instead of instead of this epsilon i have written y e raised to instead of n to 1 minus r i have just taken as this term as a x so here we have e raised to x minus 1 this is also e raised to x minus r okay so this both term are similar instead of epsilon i have replaced it by y n to 1 minus r is replaced by x the remaining all terms are as it is now we know that e raised to x can be replaced by 1 upon e raised to minus x we can write down 1 upon e raised to minus x instead of e raised to x okay now we can multiply this e raised to minus x with 1 so it will 1 minus e raised to minus x upon e raised to minus x similarly we can write we can multiply this e raised to minus x with r so 1 minus e raised to minus x into r and upon e raised to minus x so it's so e raised to minus x and this e raised to minus x will cancel out so what remains 1 minus e raised to minus x and upon 1 minus r e raised to minus x so what is the value of x it is n to 1 minus r so 1 minus e raised to minus x 1 minus e raised to minus x and upon 1 minus r e raised to minus x and instead of y again i have put epsilon so this is the final equation of effectiveness for counter flow heat exchange i hope this is clear for the today's session thank you